Hello and welcome to Expats Everywhere. If you could tell us your name, where you're from, and a little about yourself. Um, my name is Aaliyah. I'm originally from Clemson, South Carolina, and I'm working as a teacher in Egypt for the past uh, six and a half years. Wow, that's awesome. And what other countries have you worked in? Honestly, I mean, besides the United States, just Egypt. Um, I came here and I fell in love with it and just never left. And what's it like working in Egypt? It's great. It's, um, it's a very strong community. And the best thing about working here are the friendships that you build. The Egyptian people are very, very hospitable and warm. And definitely they love bringing people in and making them a part of the community. Okay, well, we target English-speaking expats, so what kinds of jobs are available for English-speaking expats there? So, of course, most of the people that you meet here that are expats are going to be teachers. This is just the main thing. There are other, other jobs. Um, I do have um, a relative um, or an in-law who works in um, medical devices. He's American, but he came in here. He's working in uh, medical devices uh, as, a, as an engineer. There's also a lot of people who will have jobs contracted at them in construction, oil, um, working in banks, of course, people who work as ambassadors, that sort of thing. And what are some of the predominant nationalities? Most of the people that I that I'm in acquaintance with are either um, from the UK, Canada, or the United States. Now, I also know I've we've had people um, from Romania, from India, from um, Australia, New Zealand. I mean, it's very international, but most of the time, American, Canadian, or from the UK. Well, let's look at you specifically. What does a typical day look like for you at your job? My job, well, um, every day is actually, thank goodness, it's very different. Um, you never know what can come with Egyptian people. They are definitely um, energetic. And um, so uh, for me, it's um, just different challenges that come. For example, we've decided, oh, we've seen something new that's related to Egypt, we want to inject that into the curriculum, or we have just a very normal day where just kind of everything's going fine. But one day to the next, it's, it's very, it's very different. It's, it can be very different. Okay. What time do you get your day started? What time do you finish? And then what do you do after hours? Okay. Well, first things first is every day. I'm very lucky that there is a drive through Starbucks right down the street. Whoop, whoop. So every morning, <laughs> no matter what, we go through the drive through at Starbucks and I have to be at school at 7.30 and the day lasts, I leave at about, um, at about three and I usually get home. I don't live, uh, I don't live far off. Um, so it takes me about 15 minutes to get home. Now other expats, because I don't live in the expat area. Most expats are in a place called Maidi and it's in the city. And on a good day, it could take you about 30 minutes to get there. On a bad day, ooh, it can take, like, if there's a car accident or something, you could be on there for a good hour and a half, two, two hours. And that's one reason why I don't choose to live there. I like being close, close by. Yeah, so you said a lot of the expats live in that certain area, and you're, you're married to an yes. Egyptian, so yes. you're choosing to live elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, I am choosing to live elsewhere. We lived, now, I lived for five years in the city. Now, right now I'm living outside the city in a place called El Rahab City. It's really nice. It's gated, very, very secure. But I lived in a place called Heliopolis, which is inside the city. And I was commuting every day and I just got sick of it. And last year I said to my husband, we gotta move, that's it. And so we packed up in one month and we moved. We moved here, and it's a big difference from living inside the city to living outside the city. Talking about a teaching position, how much can you expect to earn in Cairo? Okay, it, obviously it's going to differ based on your years of experience and your degree. So obviously someone who's just starting out and only has their bachelor's degree um, is going to be probably a lot less. And the mistake that a lot of people make when they go to these fairs is they look at that offer that's originally presented to them, not realizing that the cost of living in Egypt is very, very low. And so, yes, maybe that offer seems low, but when you take into account how much you're going to save, it ends up being, 
actually more than what you would be able to save working as a teacher in the United States or the UK or Canada. Yeah, we try to tell teachers a lot of times to look at the savings rate, not necessarily what your salary is going to be. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It's 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 a lot. Honestly, you're able to save a lot. I know so many people that got themselves out of debt by coming in and working here. Can you give us a general salary range that people should look for? Um, I mean, it's definitely going to differ from school to school. I would right. definitely out for schools that are new because generally schools that are new don't have an established uh, faculty or administration. Um, you want a school that's been around for a while. I mean, I can tell you, um, I would expect anywhere between for someone who's just starting out, um, maybe between 23 to 30, someone who only has maybe one or two years of teaching and then uh, a bachelor's degree. And then obviously if you got, I, like I got my master's and stuff and I've been teaching for a while. So obviously that went up, you know, a, a good deal. Okay. So 23,000 to 30,000 USD. So for someone who, yeah, USD. Now keep in mind um, that a lot of schools now are not paying 100% of the salary in USD. Um, but that, whatever that percentage that they're giving you in EGP, Egyptian pound, you'll use for daily expenses and that sort of thing. Okay. Because of currency fluctuation, they're more hesitant now? Well, that's what happened. Um, the, and it was good for us expats because suddenly our dollar, I mean, the, do, the Egyptian pound used to get, you could, you could get six pounds for one dollar. And then suddenly, of course, uh, the economy collapsed and it went up to... 19 now it's it's been steady at 17.5 around there for the last year it hasn't really moved but still that's really good for someone who's getting paid in dollars okay well let's look at the middle of that range you gave let's go with uh 26,000 usd if you're making 26,000 usd how much could someone save of that i mean it depends on how what the, wh the way that you live okay. so a lot of People who, especially single people, when they come, they get here and they realize, oh my gosh, there's so much traveling I can do because you're really in the middle of everywhere globally. I mean, Europe is, a, you know, a four-hour plane ride. You have um, so many cool trips you can take, like to Tanzania and and go to Cape, you know, go to South Africa. I mean, uh, Asia is right there. So it depends on how you live. Somebody who is is seriously like they're really working to save. I mean, if you're getting, let's say, you know, 25, you could probably save 15 to 20 of that if you're, if you're really watching, because it really, especially because most schools pay for your housing and they pay for your transportation. So really all that you're paying for is food and maybe medicine if you have to go to the doctor and that sort of thing. That is a super and, savings rate. Yeah. And then also keep in mind, you really don't do shopping here. Um, clothes, clothes shopping here is really, really expensive. I mean, I take home every year two empty bags and fill them up and bring them back. You don't do shopping here. Okay. We'll touch on that in just a little bit, but do you think that having 26000 is enough and what kind of lifestyle can you live? Oh, it's definitely enough um, as a f when you're starting out. Now, after you've been going at it a while and you've accumulated your degrees, obviously you will you will expect more. And after... Expect that with your master's degree, it is a huge bump up uh, usually. So um, I live, I, I, if I'm being 100% honest, and this is frustrating to my husband, I don't really watch when I, I don't look at the prices of things when I go into the supermarket or whatever. We go to a restaurant, I'm just kind of like, whatever. He's like, you're not going to even look. Where's the receipt? I, like, I don't know. I don't know where the receipt is. So, but I'm still saving a lot because that's the, 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 the cost of living here is so low, but at the same time, you can live really well. And those things that you wouldn't be able to do in the United States, like have someone come in to clean, and clean your house, have all of your clothes sent out for dry cleaning all the time, um, take, um, you know, go to the hair salon and get a manicure, get your hair done all the time. I mean, these things you don't normally do all the time. Here, it's a part of life, mm -hmm. you know, to, to have these things uh, these things on a daily basis, on a regular basis. And even mm. with all of that, you're still saving a lot. It's, it's pretty good. Yeah. I think when you're saving like mad like that and living a lifestyle where you don't have to look at price tags, you're living a high quality of life. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. That's why most 
from and they stay here for most of my friends who are not Egyptians have been here you know, eight, 10, 12 years because they come here and they love the, the life here. Hmm. You talked earlier about uh, taking two empty suitcases home. Let's talk about packing. How should someone pack to move there? And then what's the weather like? Okay, so you need to pack everything from a bikini to a really super duper heavy sweater because in the summer it's hot and you're going to go to the beach. Like the there's a, a beach, really nice beach city mm. called Aina Sukhna that's only an hour and a half away from here. And we drive down on the weekends and have a nice, nice holiday. But in the winters, I have to tell you, I, I don't, the winters here are harder than for me, the winters in the States because of the buildings. They're not insulated. They're built of concrete so they act like refrigerators and it's colder inside than it is outside so okay what are some things that you can't find in egypt that you recommend people should bring um i mean you can pretty much find everything there are little things like i'm from the south so i love dr pepper and so me stumbling across a can of dr pepper is like finding gold but most of the things you can you can find here, and if you don't find them, you learn to replace them with other cool things that that they have here. Um, like when I moved here, I didn't really know Nutella even existed, and they dip everything in Nutella here. So, and they do the coolest things. I would say there really isn't that much that you can't find here. Okay. Honestly. What What's your coping mechanism for your Dr Pepper? <sighs> Cherry cola. <laughs> just replace it <laughs> just but i have it now they are starting to get it more i know i know where to go and if i'm really willing to go that like 10 minutes extra drive out of the way to get it i will pop by and, and get it definitely nice, nice. Mm -hmm. let's switch gears and talk about safety how safe is it there and do you feel safe on a personal level Oh, absolutely. I feel very, very safe. Now, where I'm living in particular is very safe. Um, one, it's a gated city. And in order to get into the city, you have to have either a card or a scanner on your card. And if you don't have one of those, you have to go into one of the visitor's gates where they actually take a picture of your license plate. Um, so they know, you know, the people that are in the city are allowed to, to be there. So if something happens, they can lock it down. And nobody can get out. Very, very safe. And but even I, I've never been in a situation where I felt unsafe. I just came back from a week long long field trip in the desert, in the western desert, this week, actually, and I felt unbelievably safe. No zero zero hesitation on doing anything. It was well, wonderful. And you made it back to do this interview, so there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so why do you think they have these big gated checks? Um, one, I think it's just out of, out of precaution. And mm. in one thing you'll see in new Cairo in the suburbs, it's a lot of gated compounds, a lot of that. Um, they are within gated compounds. The streets are cleaner. Things are more in control. Whereas when you're not on a gated area, people are, you know, you'll find that maybe there's more trash on the ground. People are parking wherever that sort of thing. It's, um, it is partially for safety, but it is also about, okay, this is an area where the quality of living is a little higher than perhaps somewhere else. Okay. Got it. Well, how do you meet people and what do you do for fun? We do a lot of things for fun, and I meet I meet people in so many different ways. One, I meet through we're a member of a sporting club, um, and it's not just for sports. I mean, they have like a clubhouse and restaurants and all of that. And I meet people. I take yoga classes, Zumba classes. I went to go take um, some aerobics classes and that sort of thing. I meet people there. Obviously, my work friends are probably my closest friends, and then through them we meet other people. I took um, a language course when I came here. I was sick of not being able to. Speak speak to people. So I went and took an Egyptian Arabic uh, course and I met people through that. It was, um, it was super fun. And then you, one thing is that you'll find yourself meeting people through people because Egyptians are very keen, especially with foreigners. They love, they love meeting foreigners and, um, and talking to them about their lives and, Oh, really? You like living in Egypt? Really? And they're, they're shocked to hear that, that we like it. So I, we meet lots of people. It's, cool. it's not hard to make friends at all. That's awesome. What's the visa process like for moving to Egypt? It's not fun. Okay. Definitely dealing with American, the, the Egyptian embassy is not, it, 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 it's not always the easiest to get in contact with. Um, 
for me, it wasn't so uh, it wasn't so difficult. Um, but I would say for others, I've heard I've heard stories where okay, it took a little bit of time, um, but it's definitely worth it to go ahead because when you start doing things, most schools do trips and things like that. So if you don't have your proper work visa in place, it can cause a lot of problems for you. Can cause a lot of problems for the school. It's just better to make sure that you get it done. It doesn't take it's it's not a fun process, but once you get it done, it's just you know a weight off your shoulder. How's the healthcare system like? And would you feel comfortable getting a procedure done there? I actually have. Um, I my first year here, um, and my husband and I we got pregnant with our first child, and I actually got a really bad food poisoning in the hottest one of the hottest summers on record. And I was stupid and went out and ate at a restaurant and la la la, you know, and I got food poisoning, and I actually had to be put in the hospital. It was the same like any hospital that I would be in the States. If anything, those ladies know how to put an IV in really well without any pain at all. I mean, and very clean, first-rate health care. I, I, I have no problem. Um, I have no problem at all going to an, any any hospital here. Or most, I mean, you know which ones are better and which ones are going to have the best care. But I've ha I had LASIK done here. And Sweet. it was really cheap. It was really great. How much was that? Uh, for me, it was, uh, at the time, it was 3,000 Egyptian pounds, and at the time, the pound was about around 10, so it was about 300 bucks, three, four hundred dollars something Whoa. like that. super cheap. Oh. Yeah, super cheap, yeah. Okay, that's awesome. I had mine done in South Korea, and it was about 500 USD, and I, so you got a better deal. Oh, I, no, I had both. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I had both, but the, you know they give the prices per eye, so yeah. Okay. Isn't that funny? You kind of touched on this earlier, and I think I know the answer, but do you think that Egypt is a good travel hub? Why or why not? Absolutely. It's amazing. It's the best travel hub because you are in the middle of everything. I mean, we and this is the thing. My husband and I travel internationally a lot, hmm. two times a year minimum. And then if we have it up for our 10 days of spring break, uh, maybe we might do an international trip. This year, we're not. We're keeping it in Egypt. We're take, we're still taking a plane. We're going to a place called Hargeta for the kids, for the water park. Uh, but we, we've we gone from Egypt. We've gone to uh, we've gone to London. We've gone to Venice. We've gone to, we go to Berlin a lot. Uh, we went to Prague over, over uh, winter break. Um, we go, we travel a lot. So, and it's cause Europe is four hours, hmm. pretty much give or take an hour anywhere you're going. And I mean, Asia is a little bit farther. Yes. Obviously if you're going to go somewhere to like Bali or go to India or something like that, but it's so central to everything. Brilliant. Well, let's wrap it up here. What are the pros and cons of living in Cairo, Egypt? Okay. I'll start with the cons so we can end on the positive note. Sure. Um, the cons definitely will be adjusting to things culturally that are different that you wouldn't think you don't realize while you're living in the States. Like, for example, traffic lights or people actually getting in a line inside of a supermarket. Those little things in the beginning will kind of you'll be a little frustrated, but eventually you get used to it. It's like, OK, this is just the way it is. The pros are definitely one, the people. Amazing. You build lifelong relationships while you're here to the quality of life that you can have for next to no money and the ability to save. And in three, the opportunity to travel and experience things like desert camping and safari and, you know, uh, canoeing on the Nile and, you know, mountain climbing. I mean, these sort of things that you probably might not experience living, you know, in the United States or Canada or something like that. That's so awesome. Aliyah, thank you so much for stopping in with us and doing this interview. Guys, she actually saw our interview with Randall, another interview we did about Cairo, and just felt compelled to write us and, and thank us for that video. And we want to thank you for doing this video. We really appreciate you contributing to this community. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. And if you guys want any makeup tips or little bits and bobs about Egypt, you need to pop over to her channel. We'll put that in the description below so you guys can check out her channel. Thank you so much. Talk to you later.